Good morning, family and friends. We here. Go ahead and tag some your friends, your family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Dr. Simpson, and I'm so happy to be with you this morning. Yes, yes, come on and settle in. We have a journey to take. I'm excited because Pastor has been teaching a series called Ridiculous Faith. Ridiculous Faith. Last week, his message was, what is faith? And he talked about Peter and obedience, and he talked about Peter stepping out the boat, and he talked about Peter walking on water. And I left there, and I had a question, and I said, Lord, what are you saying to me about my faith? What are you saying to us about our faith? And he said, in this season, this is a season that I am calling my children to walk on faith. I said, walk on faith. He says, yes, water walking faith, water walking faith. He said, water walking faith is ridiculous faith. I said, then Lord, what is hindering your people from having ridiculous faith? And I pondered on that. Then I had to go back and I had to go back to what pastor said last week. And he, he asked us, he said, what is faith? What is faith? And then he said, it is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. Hmm. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us. Did you hear that? Waiting for us. Even though we cannot see it up ahead. Hmm. What I want is going to happen. And he said, it's the hope and it's waiting for us. Then I said, okay, okay. Then he said, ridiculous faith. What is ridiculous faith? He said, it is contagious faith. Once you experience the God of miracles, he said, you will not be able to contain yourself. He said, you will break all protocol to spread the faith. Breaking protocol? I said, God, what is he, what, what am I supposed to get? He said, you have to believe, he said, because ridiculous faith is absurd faith. Write that down. Ridiculous faith is absurd faith. He said, it don't make sense. It don't make sense that you don't have a degree, but you're the president. It don't make sense that they calling you to do stuff and you haven't finished your training. It don't make sense that you're the first person in your family to have four, it just, he said, ridiculous faith. I said, God, what did he said, get, you know, you, it's a rubber band, you know? So yesterday I, he had me look for a rubber band. So I went up, I asked pastor, he was in the office. Do you have a rubber band? And he and I, I came and I was playing. I said, now nah, the Lord told me to get this rubber band. What am I going to do with this rubber band? And he said, see, this is regular faith. Just, just here. He said, this is where you've been and this is where my people have been because they're not trusting me. He said, this is just, a, he said, but see what ridiculous faith. He said, I want to stretch it. I want to put you in that house that you never thought you're going to live in. I'm going to give you that degree that you never thought you would have. I'm going to give you that breakthrough. He said, I'm going to heal your body. He said, see, absurd faith is he get to stretching and bending and doing all kinds of stuff. He said, ridiculous faith. He said, that's why he said, well, ridiculous faith. You're going to be able to do it all kind of around your neck, in your hand. He said, and see, ridiculous faith is knowing that. See, the thing about it, he showed me. He said, with this rubber band and ridiculous faith, he said, what are you doing, daughter? He said, you holding on to me. See, that's ridiculous faith. I said, oh, now I'm starting to see, I'm starting to see, I'm starting to see what this ridiculous faith in. He said, you can't stretch and do all that by yourself. He said, what ridiculous faith. You holding on to me and you believing that what you want, that is already coming, it's already there. He said, but one thing, you got to catch up to it. I said, ooh, mm, mm, mm. What is hindering your ridiculous faith? Join me in Mark 9, 14 through 21. Verse 14 reads, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them 
and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all of the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who was possessed by a spirit that had robbed him of speech. And it's something, the enemy always trying to take your voice, but we'll deal with that next week. Whenever it seizes him, this is deep, it throws him to the ground. My, 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 my. Can you imagine? He foams at the mouth, gashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Verse 19, you unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He threw, he fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him, my, my, my. But if you can do anything, hmm, let me read that again. But if you can do anything, underline that. But if you could do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you know who he was talking to, 20, verse 23, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Verse 24, and we close there. Immediately, immediately the father exclaimed, I do believe. <laughs> Help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Hmm. What is hindering ridiculous faith? Verse 24, let's hone in there. The father of the boy exclaimed, I do believe, but help my unbelief. How many of us believe, have a margin of belief, but that unbelief, we hoping, but we not hoping. We praying, but we not believing. Let's, let's look at unbelief, because you've got to understand the, the, the strength of unbelief. Unbelief is a negative counterbalance force that cancels out faith. See, they don't go together. They can't rest in the same boat. Faith is simply trusting God. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. Unbelief is the opposite. Unbelief is thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions that are opposed to what God's word says. Mm. It's interesting because most Christians aren't doing anything to deal with this negative force of unbelief. What do most Christians say? Lord, increase my faith. I need to have more faith. They come up for prayer, pray for my faith. Or we tell people, my faith is gonna carry you. I'm gonna transfer my faith to your faith. I'm gonna carry you in faith. But the thing about it is, yeah, that's a good prayer. Keep praying that. But the thing that is so real is that what we have to do is we gotta tag on a prayer and we have to ask God to help us with our unbelief. Cause that's the real issue. Faith not having faith is an issue. But the cancellation that we gotta see is that if I, have unbelief, it's going to strike out the faith. 
So the thing about it is, if we're trying to get ridiculous faith, moving in a house you never thought you were going to live in, driving a car that you know your credit can't carry. See, when faith, we're not talking about when you have good credit and you get stuff. Well, faith, we're not talking about when you all degreed and you get stuff. We're talking about times when stuff happened by ridiculous faith that you got to pinch yourself and you be looking around like, is this candid camera? Am I, am I aging myself? Because some of y'all millennials probably don't even know who Alan Fun and Cat Candy Camera is. But that's when they used to do a prank and people used to look around and then Alan Funt would jump out the out of nowhere. He'd be like, smile, you're on candy camera. See, God trying to do that ridiculous faith. Well, you got to be, you going to be looking for cameras. You're going to be looking like what is going on. He said, but you can't get what I'm trying to give you. If you in unbelief, he said, cause you strike out your faith. So what do we have to look at? We have to really understand. Why don't we believe? Why don't we believe what is happening with our unbelief? Cause these are the things that we got to present to him. So I'm going to give you seven areas that cause people to have unbelief. The first one is ignorance of the word of God and true Christianity. We don't know God's word. We don't read God's word. And can I say this? I can say it because we, we, we virtual. And we don't, even, we don't even listen to the preach word. What happened with the pandemic where we don't do God in church no more? I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm going to keep going. The ignorance of God's word. So if I don't know God's word, it's like I'm not, I'm not going to believe it because I haven't sat in it. Number two, the lack of intimacy and relationship with God. A lot of times we're not going to believe if we don't have a relationship. If someone you know tell you something, it's a high probability that you're going to believe it. If you and Giant Eagles or Walmart and somebody walk up to you and tell you something, if you don't know them, you're not going to believe it. And that's how some of us are with God. He liked that other shopper in Walmart. So when he come up to us and say something, we're not going to believe it. See, that lack of intimacy with God. See, we can't in this day and age, we're at a critical place. We're at a critical juncture. We can't know God like that, that second cousin or fourth cousin or fifth cousin twice or, or four times removed that we only see when we go to Mississippi for the family reunion every five years. See, he can't, he can't be that. It's too much that we need from God. We're in the midst of a pandemic going on over two years. We got situations going in our life. Our minds are going. We got stuff going on. We, got, we, we can't be in a place now that we don't know him. We have to know him. So number two, that lack of intimacy. The third area that causes unbelief is pride. Not you, but maybe somebody you know. I got this. I'm grown. We grown. We got this. Hmm. The pride of man. What does the Bible says? Pride comes before fall. Pride of man. I got this. God may have spoken something to you and you like, I'm going to take care of it. Okay. I got this. I got this. He said, would you get out my business? Because you are prideful. You all in my business. Oh, because I have this, I, I could do. Oh, no, he's taking too long. I got it. God not tired. He's not on retirement. He's not on the 401k. He's still working. He's been working. But our pride, or I've had people say, I don't like nobody do nothing for me. I do it all by myself. Well, come on now. Your daddy is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And you don't want your daddy to do anything for you? Pride. Number four, influence that create an attitude of skepticism. Hearing things contrary to the word of God. In this next season, check your crowd. Do a crowd check. If you have people in your crowd and they don't believe, you need to divorce that crowd. Because in ridiculous faith, you got to fly with the eagles. You can't be with the doves. In the next influence, 
people who are skeptical. Oh, well, you said God going to do this. No, he ain't. God not going to do it. Oh, you, or they do the flip on you. Oh, you think you better than me. You think you did. No, I don't think I'm better. No, I'm not. I just know my God. And I just know what he said to me. And see, if you have influences that'll say no, or people, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you, and see, for some of us, we go back to childhood where people told us we weren't good enough. You're not going to do this. You can't do it. You do it. So we carry that stuff. So that influence, sometimes it's not even people. Sometimes you carry that story in your own head. Number five, we're looking at causes of unbelief, unhealed issues. See, we got to get well. See, as believers, I know we new creations in Christ. I know all that. I know God is doing a new thing in you. I know all that. Yes, you save, you sanctified, and you fill with the Holy Ghost. But sometimes we still, a lot of times, oftentimes, we still got issues. We have unresolved stuff that we just won't look at. Let me put my counselor cap on now. We got issues that we can't believe. We didn't believe daddy wasn't there and daddy didn't do what he was supposed to do. So now I can't believe God because my daddy didn't do it. My mother hurt me. I got mother wounds, family of origin stuff. My siblings didn't like me. This person didn't like me. I can't believe it. They told me I was nothing. They told me I was this. They told me I wouldn't make it. They told me I was stupid. They told me I was dumb. They rejected me. They abandoned me. I have unforgiveness. I have fear and I have control and all those un healed issues start banging together and God sends you a word. You can't even receive it by faith because you're unhealthy. See, we got to get to a place with emotionally healthy spirituality that we stop hiding be behind God. In, in the time of ridiculous faith, we got to be able to understand. I got to get my mind right. Number six, we're looking at causes of unbelief. Number six, sin. We doing some stuff that you know we're not supposed to. We're living a double-minded life. We're living on a fence. What comes with sin? Shame, guilt, blame. So now when all those things start happening, they start digging on faith. So now I can't believe God. God's not going to use me because I'm still doing this. God's not going to do this because I'm still doing it. God's not going to bless me because I'm still doing it. He's not going to do this because he's not going to do this. He not gonna, it's time to get out of he's not going to do and, and get it together. Because with ridiculous faith, can you hear my words? God wants to bless you. He want to take you from nothing to something. He wants to take you to little from much. He wants to take you out of that boat. He wants to take you into an ocean and out the swimming pool. He wants to bless you and bless you indeed. He want to take five, your bank account from $5 to $5,000 to $5 million. He says, come on now. We got to get it together. We can't put stuff in front of God. That relationship that we hanging on to, that's unhealthy. Do not. Do not forfeit your blessing over somebody or some people who not doing nothing. You got the influence. You have the power. And number seven, a lack of spiritual discipline causes unbelief. We not reading. We not praying. We not fasting. We have the form of godliness, but we lack the power. We look good. We walk good. We come in and we sit good. But if we had to do anything other than walk in, sit down, and smile, and pretend, it's time. Come on. It's time. It's time. It's time. Ridiculous faith. Type ridiculous faith in the comment. Ridiculous faith. Ridiculous faith. God is calling us to ridiculous faith, absurd faith, faith that you can't stretch a rubber band faith. Come on, ridiculous faith. Come on and type it until you believe it. I'll, it don't matter if you don't see yourself with it. It's going to catch because what the pastor say, ridiculous faith is contagious. And we're not talking about now we know now y'all know about what stuff is con contagious. This this coronavirus is contagious. OK, you you cough, you sneak, you you got to be we got to mask. We're talking about can you believe if 
ridiculous faith was like this virus. Oh my God. And it started spreading like this virus. Ridiculous faith. We're not talking about just from faith to faith. We're talking about ridiculous faith. You got to see it. And sometimes we got to stretch our mind because we so used to, we asking God for a car and we got good credit. He said, ask me for something else that you can't do. See, ridiculous faith is when you put something in front of him that you know good and well you can't do. And you say, I'm going to test you with this. Ridiculous faith is when you speak it, you already know. God, you got this. You're going to do it. Ridiculous faith is when you walk and you say, I'm going to be a property owner and I'm going to own all 10 of these apartment builders in this, on this street. I'm going to own every. That's ridiculous faith. Ridiculous faith is when you see something that you want and you know you're not even supposed to be in that neighborhood. You know that if they see you, they may, a, they may arrest you. But you say, uh-uh, uh-uh, because of my ridiculous faith, I'm I'm about to walk in this mansion. Be careful now. I'm going to walk in this mansion and don't go to the door. Just touch the grass. See, ridiculous faith is when you say, I'm going to put my hand on it. I'm going to lay my hand on it. I got this. This is going to be mine. One day they're going to move and I'm going to be moving in. Come on now. Come on now. Ridiculous faith is when you say, I'm going to be mortgage free. And you look and that little slip that they give you say, you still owe $200,000. And you say, uh-uh, by faith. By ridiculous faith, my debt is canceled. Come on now. Ridiculous faith is when you put all your bills on the floor and you see Visa here. You see another credit card here. You see student loan here. You see this here. And you say, by faith, my debt is canceled. See, that's ridiculous faith. God is calling us to have ridiculous faith. It ain't by faith I'm going to get this little cheeseburger. He says, no. By faith, I own the whole gourmet restaurant. Then when I walk in, instead of them saying, where do you want to sit, ma'am? Where do you want to sit, sir? They said, hello, Mr. So-and-so. Hello, Mrs. So-and-so. And you own the doggone joint. That's ridiculous faith. Come on now. We got to stretch our mind. Stretch your mind. Hit in the comment. Rubber band faith. Rubber band. Come on, get your rubber band. If you at home, go find your rubber band. Go get your rubber band and get to stretching it. Go get your rubber band and say, uh-uh, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of it is. Uh-uh. I don't care what my mom and them didn't have. I don't care what my generations didn't have. Uh-uh. I'm coming out of this. Uh-uh. I'm going to be the generational curse breaker. I'm going to be the one that's going to be different. I'm going to be the one that's going to break this multi-generational transmission. I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one with the education. I'm going to be the one that's going to pay off my mama debt and my grandmama debt. I'm the one that's going to pay off my mama home. I'm the one that's going to buy my mama a home. Ah. Oh, come on now. Come on now. I'm going to be the one that's going to put my kids through school and they're not going to take out no student loans. They're not going to get no grant money. I'm going to walk into that office and they're going to say, may I help you? And you're going to smile and you're going to back away from the counter because you're going to even be tickling yourself. And you'll say, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. I'm here to pay tuition. You're here to pay tuition? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. How much is my daughter's balance? How much is my son's balance? They all say, well, let me look. Mm, daughter living on campus. Let me look. Let me look. Mm, the balance mm, is $22,000. And you're going to say, okay, give me a minute. You're going to give me a minute. Cause you're going to, you're going to be, see, you're going to need a minute cause you're going to be tripping. You're going to be reaching for your, 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 your checkbook and you're going to be laughing <laughs> with God all at the same time. And they're going to think you done lost your mind and you start rocking and you start high and you start doing all this smiling. And then you pull out the check and you know, it's not going to bounce. We're not talking about them bouncing checks. We're talking about the check that's going to cash when it hit PNC. We're talking about the check that's going to cash when it hit the bank. We talking about the check that when it get to Key Bank, it's going to go through. We talking about the check that when it get to Huntington, it's already paid. We talking about that kind of check. And then you write out
out that check and you hear, here you go, ma'am. Here you go, sir. And they say to you and they look at you and they say, your daughter balance is zero dollars. Your son's balance is zero dollars. And then when you walk away from the counter, you don't even feel heavy. Why? Because 22 grand ain't done nothing to your bank account. That ain't nothing. It's like you done spent 22 cents to get you a bag of chips. You looking and you looking and you like, I'm talking about ridiculous faith. Can you feel me this morning with ridiculous faith? Pastor said it's contagious. Can you catch it this morning? I catch it. I caught it from him. I caught it from him. He said ridiculous faith. He said ridiculous faith. I caught it from pastor. I caught it from my husband. I want you to catch it. Ah, when you walk in a place, you start walking different. I'm talking about ridiculous faith. We asking and waiting for stuff. That's little stuff. Don't ask God no more for no. Can I, can you bless me with that shoe, them pair of shoes? You could buy them shoes, girl. Ask God for something that you know you can't get. Or for something you know you can't do. I'm not trying to knock nobody, but I had people calling with testimony. Ah, I, I, God bless me with, ah, uh, I ain't trying to knock nobody, but yeah, it was a blessing, yeah. But you got good credit. You could have got that car in your sleep, okay? I'm talking about ridiculous faith. Ridiculous faith. Pastor and I know about ridiculous play, faith. We have been in places in our life where stuff shouldn't have lined up. <laughs> we have walked into situations where I'm telling you it shouldn't have lined up. He told y'all about how we got our house. We shouldn't be living where we living. We ain't going there stacked and loaded. He woke up one day and he was like, we gonna get us a house. And I went along. I'm like, okay. Okay. He said, we're going to do it. And I'm thinking, okay, we're about to go here. And here we come down a development with nothing but dirt and a couple of high. I said, well, wait, wait. Uh, what? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, we going to do what? He said, we're going to build. Nobody in my family ever built no house. I couldn't even conceptualize that. I grew up in East Cleveland. What I know about building a house? I'm like, huh? Ridiculous faith. Walking in like you got something when you like, oh boy. <laughs> but God said it. And God just spoke some stuff to you all, but you can't receive it. You can't believe it. He says, uh-uh. Mm. He said, if we are going to be really strong and see our ridiculous faith produce, we need to cut off the inroads of unbelief. You got to cut it off. You got to cut it off. But I told you earlier, you have to have an awareness of what it is. Yes, pray for your faith. But when you pray, God, I need you to help my unbelief. I don't believe because I've been told that I was nothing and I'll never be nothing. Help me. Help me. Show me, I need to know that you believe. And the thing about it, it's not just one time, but we're going to get there. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. So now go, if you have your Bible still open to Mark, go back, go and meet me in Mark 21 and 24. I just want to lift something. I just want to lift something. So let, let's, let's read this again. If you're joining us, we're in Mark 21, 24, go ahead and tag someone. You know someone who needs to boost their faith? Go up, tag them, call them, text them, tell them, jump on. They still got a few minutes. Come on, tell them, come on, come on, come on. So now, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. I'm, I, in my mind of minds, the, the text, I looked, I'm trying to find everywhere. Well, how old was the boy? Hey, it, well, how old? Was I, we don't know. Couldn't find where, how old. I'm like, I, and then God told me, you so deep. Do you really need to know his age? All you need to know is that this has been happening for a while. The spirit, since he was a little boy, I could imagine the spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water, trying to kill him. 
And for some of us, the spirit's been trying to throw you, trying to kill you. But that's a whole nother lesson. Let me go back. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. If you can, I told you to underline, if you can. Now, he had faith to bring him. He knew who he was looking for when he, he said, teacher, teacher, I brought, I, I, he, he knew it, but he had faith. But did he have ridiculous faith? Because Jesus had to kind of lightweight rebuke, rebuke him like, what do, you, what do you mean if I can? I know we talk about getting insulted now and getting our feelings hurt. Can you imagine being Jesus and all these people tripping? How many times he going to heal? He going to do stuff? And they, if you can, if you can, what more do y'all need to see? I'm like, when I, okay, okay. He said, if I can, he says anything, underline that, anything is possible if a person what? If a person what? If a person what? If a person believes. Believe. Believe. He said, uh, 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 if you can. So he's questioning who he is. If you can. So if you can. Okay. So you came to me and you wasn't really sure that I could. You know, but have you ever went to him and you, but you, but if you, if you, if you, he said, uh-uh, nah, uh-uh. He says, anything. See, my faith builders, ridiculous faith walkers, you want to do this. Anything is possible if a person believes. Okay, water walkers. Okay, so now I want you to begin to think as we go through the rest of what we're going to do today because we're going to finish this next week. So we're going to take our time today because we'll finish it wherever we stop. We're going to go back. We're going to finish it next week. So now. Now, think of him. I want you to picture him. If you can, if you can. Okay. And then he says, uh, if I can. Mm, okay. 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 He says, anything is possible if a person believes. So now I don't even want you to do nothing, but put in your mind that you stepping out and you walking on water. Just see yourself. Just come on, if you can. He says, anything is possible if you believe. Believe that you see yourself walking on water. Believe that you are a water walker today. He says, come on. He said, anything is possible. Anything is possible. See, when you when he gets you out water walking, come on now. Come on now. I start to bring and put on my, my little, my, my, my galoshes now. Because see, you know, because, but he said, you too deep. You worrying about getting your feet wet. I'm talking about step out. He said, now. Come on now. He said, I'm calling on water walkers. Okay. So water walkers, it's like, you got to get your, you got, but you got to, you got to believe. Cause he says anything is possible if you believe. So you got to believe, you got to believe that he could do it. You got to believe that he could do it seedily and abundantly more than you can ask or think. You got to believe, you got to believe. And then the father said, ah, mm, I do believe. But help me overcome my unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. Didn't I tell y'all earlier? Help me overcome my unbelief. Because I'm just thinking in my mind and mind that this father has taught himself. He one of them people. I'm grown. I got this. So he's taught himself how to cope. He's taught himself how to manage. He's taught himself how to survive but he's been doing it all in and of himself. Where are my tired people at? This father was struggling to have faith in the power of God. Where are my tired people at? That you tired. You've been trying to do everything by yourself and you tired. And you, and you going to God in prayer. If you can, you, you pray it. If you can, Lord, if you can, if you can. What did we say earlier? You canceling out your faith, struggling. So now, so now, let's start this. Let's see how far we get. So, unbelief. I needed you to understand what causes unbelief. Then I need you to understand, water walkers. That it's time to focus. Mm. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time to focus. It's time to focus. So flip on through and join me at Hebrews 12 and 2. Flip on through, flip on through. I'm not going to wait for you to get all the way there. I'm going to go ahead and then when you get there, just put a little bubble there. Put, put a little asterisk there because you may need to go back and read this again later on. He says, looking away from all will distract us. Let me start again. Looking away from all that will distract us. Someone was like, huh? Is she talking to me? Yep, I'm going to start again. Looking away from all that will distract us. And, remember and, conjunction, junction, what's your function? We learned that in high school. Oh, elementary school, I think. Yeah, elementary school. And, they come together. So, looking away from all that will distract us and conjunction, junction, and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of faith the first incentive of our belief and the one who brings our faith to what? Maturity. Ridiculous faith is mature faith. Who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Let's go back to the top of that. Looking away from all that will distract us, all, all things, all people, all, all, and focusing our eyes on Jesus. What did I say our point was? Focus. God is calling. What did he say to Peter? Come. What am I saying to you? Come. He said, come. He says, come. Come, come, come where, come where, come where. Come and walk on this water. Come and come into this ridiculous faith. Yeah, come, 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 come. Ah, mm. He says, mm. water walkers, water walkers. And I'm thinking about pastor's lesson from last week. And he said that Pete, that God, Jesus beckoned Peter to come. He beckoned him to come. And when I look at that, I said, man. Hmm. See, and I was like, man. So he, it wasn't that he sank because of a lack of faith. He, it, was, it was just unbelief and a lack of focus. Because the thing about it is, when God is telling you come, yeah, people have said, yeah, it was, it was foggy, yeah, but you, you know, the, you, my sheep hear their, my voice. They know my voice. So he knew whose voice. So it's like that lack of focus. Because see, the thing about it, water walkers, come on now. Let me tell you something, water walkers. What ridiculous faith, you just got to walk. You can't look to the left. You can't look to the right. If you like me and you're not the water person, you can't look down at the water. You just got to step. Because, see, the first little movement I see, I'm going to be like, uh-uh, he ain't tell me to do that. So the thing about it is that he said in this next move, come on, come on with ridiculous faith, with ridiculous faith. He said in this next move, he said, you got to do what? Write it down, write it down, put it in the, put it, come on, let me see it. I'm going to look at it later. I can't see it now. I want focus. Come on, just hit it. Focus, 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 focus. You got to focus. Focus on what? You got to focus your eyes on Jesus. Don't focus your eyes on your spouse. Don't focus your eyes on your children. Don't focus your eyes on that job that's getting on your nerves. Don't focus your eyes on your bank account. Don't focus your eyes on nothing, what people saying. Don't worry about that. Don't focus your eyes on folks. Don't focus your eyes on folks who ain't go going nowhere, doing nothing. Don't look at nobody. Look straight ahead and just say, God... I'm looking at you. So what am I telling you to do? I want you to become tunnel focused in this season. Because see, with ridiculous faith, you can't look. Because yes, I'm telling you, what the pastor showed us last week, the, a storm came. Winds was blowing. And, and just like us in our life, when the storms come, we be like, nah, that's all right. No, God didn't say it. Yes, he did say it. 
Have you ever started something and you know God put you in a place, a new job or whatever, and, and he put you, a relationship, whatever. You know God said it, and then you get into it and the winds blow. And you, ah, nah. And people are like, God didn't say that. God didn't tell you that. But you know God said it. You knew God said it. And you stepped out on what he said, and the winds still came. The warfare came. The stuff came. And, but it's going to come. It's going to come. If if God said it, come on now, whatever God is, Satan is going to be there. Come on. What happened to Nehemiah? Nehemiah was building. He went back to help his people. He was building, building. Okay, I'm going to help build. And who came? He looked down and who was there? Sam Ballard. Come on, you know Sam Ballard going to show. Quit tripping when stuff happened. If God said it, and the thing about it, if God is in it, you know the enemy going to be careful if you're doing something that don't nothing show up. That's when you got to be afraid. You're like, wait a minute, I ain't know what. Not that, huh, that, huh, maybe that. Huh. So now, come on, y'all. Pastor trying to get us to ridiculous faith as a ministry. Ridiculous faith. Come on now. Stay focused. So Peter had a level of faith. He got in the boat. He had a level of faith. He stepped out. He just didn't have ridiculous faith. The man whose boy was sick, he had some faith. Yeah, I'm going to take him. Okay. Yeah, okay. He probably was like, you know what? I, I don't know what else to do. Let me just. He had faith. He just didn't have ridiculous faith. He took his eyes off Jesus. You cannot take your eyes off Jesus. The reason it's hard for Christians to be water walkers is that when, still, when we start dipping, we take our eyes. No, you got to look at him. You got to see him. And if you can't see him, you know, it's a time when you, you know you start getting older. See, sometimes you may have to put on your readers. You got to see him. You got to see him. You got to see him. Don't look at the people. Stop looking at the faces. You got to see him. Didn't that mess Saul up? Saul forfeited his kingship. Talking about, I looked at the people. I looked at the face of the people and the people. The people? The people? Saul, come on, the people. Do you want to get to the end of your life and your testimony is, I could have had it all. I could have been blessed beyond blessed. I could have had overflow on overflow. And all God wanted me to do was to focus on him. But I looked at the people. Oh, you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel bad. You're going to feel bad. And especially if they got your stuff. Oh, I'm talking to somebody who's been focusing on the wrong thing. Focus now. If God tell you, I'm going to take that marriage and that marriage is going to be a marriage ministry. But you catching it. So you like, no, nah, he ain't said it. He said it. You got to go through some stuff to get to, to where my husband and I have been married with 21. This year be 22 years. Do y'all think we just got here? Oh, we just woke 22 years later. And we like we had to go through some stuff. OK. We had to go through the fiery furnace. But one of the things that we knew when we was going through the fiery furnace, we was like the, the Hebrew boys. We knew that God was with us. We didn't never took our eyes off Jesus. You can't, no matter what happened, high, low, and in between, we was focused on Jesus. Didn't know how, didn't know where, didn't know what, didn't know when. All we knew was Jesus. How are we going to get out of this? Jesus. What are we going to do with this? Jesus. How are we going to pay this? Jesus. What are we going to do here? Jesus. What are we going to, Jesus. How are we going to, Jesus. Can we just, Jesus. Are we going to, G? Is it, G? That's you got to stay like this. You got to focus on Jesus. He told you he going to heal you, but you get another report. When God tell you he going to heal you, expect another report. Just expect it. But he, he not done. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth. He tell you he going to make you a millionaire, but you've been waiting. So now you're going to start doing some stuff that you're not supposed to be doing to get the money. He is Jehovah. Do you do? Do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? He is Jehovah Jireh. Do you know who he is? 
He tell you he's going to bless you, but you take over and you take your eyes off of him and you settle. He sends you a word, but you start listening to people. It is something how when God sends you a word, here come people. Have you ever been in a good place in your life as a single person? And just when you focus, here come Bo Weevil. Bo Weevil or, Bo, or Bo Weevil Ina. Come on now. Focus. 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 Mark 9 and 24, immediate the boy, the boy's father's claim. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. The same thing that happened to each and one of us. We lose focus. Come on, water walkers. Come on, water walkers. We come today against distractions. We're not going to have no more distractions. We're going to focus. We're going to focus. We're telling you now ridiculous faith. We told you the causes of unbelief. We told you what you need to do. You need to focus, not focus on them and mom and them and them and them and neighbor and them. No, you got to focus on Jesus. You got to be so tunnel, tunnel focus on Jesus. Come on now. Come on, ridiculous faith. Come on, put in the chat. Ridiculous faith ridiculous faith come on don't be scared ridiculous faith uh, come on ridiculous faith come on come on blow your mind faith blow your mind faith that you looking like my 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 yes God and we believe you God we believe you God we believe you God we believe you God ridiculous faith he wants to stretch you see I got my rubber band he wants to stretch you he want to stretch you. Ah, we're going to stop there. We're going to pick this up next week. We're going to stop. We're going to stop right there. 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 Let's, let's pray. Father God, we just come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We come, Father God, and we say, yes, God. We avail ourselves to be stretched by you, God. Oh, God, we want everything that you have predestined for us. We want it, God. Oh, God, help our unbelief, God. Help us to overcome our unbelief. Whatever Whatever our unbelief is, God, we give it to you, God. You says we could cast our burdens upon you because you care for us, God. And we cast our unbelief on you right now, God. We want nothing to cancel out the faith and the ridiculous faith, God. We want nothing to null it, God. Oh, God, we want all of what you have for us, Father God. Pour out on us, God. Drip on us, God, like never before, God. Oh, God, we, we're water walkers. We want to step into the water, God. We want to step into the the water God we're not trying to figure out what to do when we get in the water we just want to step in the water because you said to come oh God help us to focus on you to look at you God oh God we love you today God we bless you today God oh God have your way in our life God in the name of Jesus God and for those who don't know you this morning Father God if they logged on God and they don't know you God we pray God for their salvation right now God we pray God that they will confess that you are Lord God we pray God that they will they will speak God that they believe that you died and you rose again God we believe oh God that you died for their sins God we pray Father God that they would accept you God Oh, God, that they will believe, God, that you are God, that you will, they will believe, God, and they will accept you, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God. We bless you, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, for all that you do, we'll be ever so mindful to give your name the praise, give your name the glory, and give your name the honor, because you are God. We love you, we bless you, and we seal these prayers in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, my brothers and sisters. We'll finish next week. We'll finish next week. Hold tight. We'll be back at you to do part two and to wrap this up. Ridiculous faith. But what do I want you to do when we talk about ridiculous faith? Don't stop now. Don't log off now. Hold up. Hold up. Don't hit click because we're not all the way done. Listen, it's time to give. It's time to give. And, and I don't want you, I, I, I'm going to challenge you not to give on a faith level. Mm -mm, not today. Not today. See, he's stretching us. See, he's stretching us. Not today. See, today I want you to give on a ridiculous faith level. Ridiculous faith is when you pay your tithe, because I want you to do that. I want you to pay your tithe. 
But today I want you to do a ridiculous faith seat. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Simpson, first lady, chief child. Yes. I am challenging you to stretch today. Yep, yep, yep. I'm challenging you to stretch today. Give your tithes. I'm not going to touch the tenth. We shouldn't touch the tenth. The tithe belongs to the Lord. But there's a seed. Some of you know you need him to do something with your unbelief. Some of you know that God has spoken to you. And this morning, I, I, I want you to, I'm not going to put a dollar amount on it. I'm not going to say give 20, give it. Because some of you, giving 20 is not no ridiculous faith. Giving 20 is like going to McDonald's and you give them what, two Big Macs and a fry and two Big Cokes and you cool. I want you to stretch. Ridiculous faith is when I say, God, I have never given an offer like this before. But I'm going to give it. Say, first lady, are you asking me to stretch this? I'm asking you why. Because I know what God can do when you have ridiculous faith. I went to do a woman's conference. They told me they was covering my room. I walked in the door. I just expected to get a two-bedroom. And I was happy with that because I was like, oh, they paying for my room, sir. My husband released me to go. They paying for my room. I'm thinking I'm just going to get a little old room. I walked in and my, my God stretched my mind. He said, what were you expecting me to do? He stretched my mind. I, I was so shocked I had to take a video and send it to my husband. And I had to call my husband when I was going room to room. I, it just meant little old me. I had two bathrooms, just me, y'all. I had a, a whole living room. I had a dining room. I had a whole king size suite. I had all kind. I had a whole kitchenette, just me. God said, I'm trying to do ridiculous faith. He said, come on, baby. Do you think that I, I'm not God? He said, come on, baby. I'm taking you out your comfort zone. He says, come on, baby. He says, stretch. So when I was there, every time they said, give a seed, I gave a seed. I said, I did not sit in these people's house and not give a seed. God said, I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you. Today, today, come on, people. I want you to stretch. I want you to stretch. A dollar is not a stretch. Take that back. Five dollars is not a stretch. Take that back. Twenty dollars is not a stretch. Yes, I'm asking because I'm a giver and I stretch. I would stretch. And if you're around me for any amount of time, ask some people who roll with me. You're going to come through the line, and by the time you sit down, everything you have is paid for because I'm going to believe God. I'm not going to say, oh, God, what you going to do? I'm going to be broke. My husband and I have been who we are because we stretch. We stretch. Today, I want you to stretch. How can you do it? You could do a push pay, 77977. If you're a guest, I'm also talking to you. Come on and stretch with us today. Come on and stretch with us. 77977, you could do push pay. Or you could do cash app. You'll see it on your screen. Everybody love cash app. Hit a cash app. Or you could mail it in to our P.O. box. However you do it. However you do it. If you cash app, I want you to put, because you can put a little message, put my stretch seed, okay? My stretch seed, yeah? Your stretch seed. Come on, come on. If you stretch today, I'm telling you, Pastor and I are going to meet you at a place of prayer. We're going to cover you, because we know what ridiculous faith could do. We don't look at what is. We believe in what God has said. Come on and stretch, stretch. Stretch. I want you to give. I want you to give. I want you to give. Give like never before. Don't look at what is in your bank account. Look at what the Holy Spirit right now, the Holy Spirit said, I'm speaking to them. I'm speaking to them. I'm speaking to them. They got to listen. And he going to speak. Don't it seem absurd what he's telling you to give? It seems absurd. And he said, some of you saying, First Lady, Dr. Simpson, I don't get paid till next week. You're going to give yours next week because I'll be back. Mm -hmm. Do it next week. you fine. But all the water walkers say amen. Hit before you leave water walker. Come on, let me see the water walkers so we know who to cover today. Come on, hit water walkers so we can lift you up. Come on, hit water walkers. Amen, amen. We love you. We bless you. Stay safe. This is what All-Star Weekend, if you're going downtown, stay safe, be warm. We love you. Next week at 10 a.m., we will be back face-to-face -face and virtual. So join us next week. Next week, I'm going to finish this lesson.
water walk in faith. I believe, but help my unbelief. And I want to talk to you about don't be afraid. Because sometimes we be afraid. And God says, it's time to activate your voice, to speak those things that are not as though they are, and watch them manifest.